Hello YouTube! This is Michael B. The Game Genie, and this is my August update for my NES Complete Collection Chronicles. Now you're playing with power! So guys, the summer's almost over, and so are so many great adventures driving across all of Newfoundland, going to thrift stores, flea markets, uh, video game stores I didn't know about. So uh, it's back to my normal uh, flea markets here on the weekends, and just my thrift stores just locally for the next little while. But before that, let's see if I hit a milestone this time. Could have possibly have hit the magic milestone of 300 NES games. Let's find out. So guys, I don't know if this is kind of cheating because uh, the first 11 games I've picked up today, I didn't actually pick them up myself. Uh, you may remember from my last NES Complete Collection Chronicles and from my game pickups of the New Adventure Island, uh, Episode 5, I actually found a store called Peninsula Video Games in Marystown, Newfoundland, and I loved it. I was so excited. I picked up some great games there. I picked up uh, Silver Surfer and... Clash Demon Head, both for six bucks, which I was super excited about. Well, I didn't officially go back there, but my mom recently took a vacation up there. She went to see her grandmother. Uh, she went to see her mother in Grand Bay, and <laughs> of course, I asked her to stop in there along the way. And she called me on the phone and let me know what they had. So I picked up a little more games. Let me show you what I got. Okay, guys. So the first one's not technically a licensed game, but I'm collecting them anyways because I like them, and it's a tension game, and I picked up. Fantasy Zone on the NES. I picked up Orb 3D. Konami game. I'm surprised actually how many licensed games Konami actually made for the NES. I didn't know about. But I picked up The Lone Ranger. A very strange puzzle game. Hatchress. A game I was almost a thousand percent sure I already had. But anyways, I picked it up. Guardian Legend. Uh, a game someone just told me about. Uh, they actually consider it to be pretty fun. So I'm excited to check it out. Kabuki Quantum Fighter, a game I know absolutely nothing about, but it's made by a company I actually really like on the NES, that is SNK, Mechanized Attack. I don't know a whole lot about this game, I'm thinking it might, I don't think it's worth anything, but I think it's a really uncommon NES game, and that is, uh, it's a sports title, Baseball, Legends of the Diamond, made by Bandai. Galaxy 5000, Racing in the 51st Century. A little Twin Cobra. An Iron game. I really like the Iron games for the NES. I automatically think of Metal Storm, so I'm excited to try this out. I don't know if it's any good. But I picked up Image Fight. And another American Sammy game. And everybody knows I like American Sammy for the NES. Silkworm. So guys, the next set of games, I bought all of them here locally. I've got Spy vs. Spy. Adventures of Lolo 2. Tag Team Wrestling. Turn off. <laughs> uh, whenever I see this game, all I think of is the bad uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson movie, and that is Spy Hunter. It's a Hudson Soft quasi-shooter, Starship Hector. This is a game that uh, I actually <clears throat> heard about for the first time uh, in a video by Electric Adventures did for the Game Man Dance 500 subscriber contest. I saw it and said, I have to go pick it up. It's a Taito game, and that is... Sky Shark, and a game I absolutely had to pick up. Um, I just watched, uh, I love Turbo Views, uh, Spider 1A, Chris Bucci, and he just did a review on amazing, amazing uh, TurboGrafx 16 shooter called Super Star Soldier. So it's actually really hard to find and a bit pricey on eBay if you go looking for it, but I figured, hey, you know what I can do? I can go pick up the original NES release. And it was produced by Taxon, who's another great company who just uh, who made uh, who released the GI Joe NES game. So I picked it up. Star Soldier on the NES. Outside of Marble Madness, I don't know if Milton Bradley really released a lot of great NES titles, but uh, 
I haven't tried this one out yet. I don't have a whole lot of hope for it. And that is Milton Bradley World Games by Epics. I don't think it's going to be very Epics. It's a game I've heard a lot about. I saw a lot of ads for it when I was a kid, and I'm excited to play it. And that is Deja Vu. So guys, this is a great game. I saw a lot of ads for it when I was a kid, but I never really played it, and I'm excited to have it. And that is Deja Vu. Did we do this already? Diddy's boxing game. Ring King. Ha! <laughs> this one should definitely be fun. Pictionary. And a game that uh, Dan was given some advice on that he should pick up. And a lot of people have said it's actually not good, but it looks like one of the very first and earliest Taito games on the NES, and that is The Legend of Cage. Okay, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. Here's where the quality really picks up. So, another Konami licensed game that I'm pretty excited about. I've heard so many good things about it. I didn't even know this game existed when I was a kid, and ever since I knew about it, I wanted to find a copy. I finally did. That is Goonies 2 by Konami. Apparently, a somewhat uncommon game that a lot of people are looking for. I'm very excited to say I have it in my collection now, and that is Toxic Crusaders on the NES. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers the absolute... They were just strange trauma movies, the Toxic Avenger, from when you were a kid, and I didn't even know this. Somehow they came out with some kind of cartoon show based around this uh, R-rated adult-type comedy movie. They came out with a cartoon, and I guess this is the NES... NES release for it. Godzilla, Monster of Monsters. Bring me Peter Pan! Hook? Again, I really don't understand sometimes where they came up with the ideas to turn movies or licenses into NES games. Here's another one I find extremely strange. The Untouchables. Very quirky NES game by a company I'm not really that familiar with, but so full. Wall Street Kid said to try that out. Super Pitfall, The Uncanny, and Unenjoyable. X-Men on the NES. Uh, I'm really disappointed this case is kind of beat up a little bit. There's a lot of marker on it, so I'm going to have to try to see if I can get that off. And that is The Rocketeer. Another somewhat uncommon game for the NES, and in my recollection, one of the first times I've ever seen THQ on a game, and that is Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Tecmo World Wrestling. I gotta be getting pretty close to having most of the wrestling games for the NES right now. As a kid growing up, if I knew this game existed, I would have absolutely had to have it. From what I understand, I would have been completely disappointed by it, but it's probably from my favorite superhero when I was a kid, and one of my favorite superheroes now. And I don't care what anybody says, the last movie they put out was actually good, and I'm kind of disappointed from the look of what they're coming out with for the new reimagining, but Anyways, I picked up Superman on the NES. I love Superman. Superman Returns was a fun movie because it was exactly like the 80s movies. Why? Why do you have to try to change these things and destroy it? Why is Superman on some kind of fishing vessel? Why can he grow a beard? Did you not read any of the original story? Anyways, that's a debate for another time. Probably the game I might be least excited about out of this whole pile, and that is Lunar Pool. I haven't played this yet, but I would imagine if you're in space, you may have more things to be concerned about than a game of pool. And last but not least, probably the game I'm most excited to pick up out of the entire pile I just showed you, it's a Konami license game, and it was always on my radar. It was always a game I knew about and I heard was incredible and I wanted to play. But uh, recently, I subscribed to an amazing YouTuber named Delivery of Animal. And one of the things that he always, always put in his videos was just recently, he picked up a great Konami game, and he just never stopped talking about it. And I had to get a copy of the game. I couldn't even watch his videos. I was so jealous. So finally, I was lucky enough to go to Netherworld Collectibles, and I was talking to the guy there, and I told him, there's two games I really have on my radar right now. Darkwing Duck was one. Couldn't do anything to help me about that. But then I told him the other game. And he said to me, uh, you may want to come back in like two weeks after the owner has a chance to basically take apart and clean all the games. We might have had one come in. 
So I couldn't wait. So basically, I went away that day, I thought about it, I went away for the weekend, I came back, I couldn't wait anymore, I went to the store on Monday, and I confronted the owner and I said, hey, I heard you may have a copy of this game in the store. And he said, yeah, but it's not clean, it might be three or four weeks before I get it cleaned. And I said, I can clean the game. <laughs> it's not really that hard, uh, I'd love to take a chance on it. So he went through the pile of stock that came in that he hadn't even inspected, he found the game, he sold it to me. I took it home and it was perfect. I just cleaned it a little bit and it's worked ever since. And I'm so excited to finally say I have this game in my collection. It's amazing. It's really fun to play. Definitely something that needs to be reviewed on a high level and everybody should enjoy. That is Bucky O'Hare on the NES. So guys, that's 37 new NES games. Adding that to my original total of 251. That brings me up to... That's right. 288 NES games. Didn't quite hit the 300 mark, still waiting, but I think I'm going to be pretty close. I'd say September rolls around, I'll definitely be over 300. Anyways guys, this is Michael B. The Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time. So guys, that's everything my mom picked up for me, Peninsula Video Games. This is kind of sad, 32 years old, my mom's still going out to get me games, but hey, whatever way you can get them, right?